deliberation of thought. What is this flower? Oh, oh this is, I think, such and such species. Oh, this must be slightly different from the other kind of flower. All these thoughts arise. Whereas, as we got in, went into it before, there is a way of seeing the flower where no such labeling or no such deliberation of thought comes in. And the science here has this to say, you can perceive the flower better if the mind is silent. You can smell it better. You can see the brightness of the color much better if your mind is silent. So, likewise, inquiry goes to a higher level when there is no uh, you know, articulation of the question. When there is no articulation, I am inquiring, but I don't articulate in the form of words, in the form of some structure. It is just intelligence operating. Then that inquiry and observation come together. And you used another word, passive. Uh, true observation actually is passive. And passive is not in an uncomplimentary sense here. Generally, we, we look at somebody, you know, why is he so passive? Why is he not getting up and doing something? That is in the ordinary parlance. In, the, in this context of uh, uh, deep self-observation, self-awareness, passive is a complementary word. You know why? Moment we are active, we are disturbed in the scenario. Some of you who may know this, this, this comes in physics or I think in many other scenarios. If the observing instrument gets into the field of observation, it disturbs what is observed. If the thermometer that you put under your tongue, suppose itself is, uh, uh, you know, it gets in, technically speaking, to some extent it disturbs the temperature there, because it joined there. Ordinarily, you know, the instruments uh, cause negligible variation, therefore no problem. But in advanced experiments in science, in physics and so on, the instrument we use in electronics, the word used is, it should not load the uh, circuit. There is a circuitry. What you, you know, the instrument that you insert should in no way change it. In order that it in no way changes what is being measured, it should be passive. Right. So, observation at its height is passive in a complementary sense, absence of disturbing interference. Lastly, why physics or why mathematics, etc., even in human relationship, uh, in sublime human relationships, let us say a father is, you know, uh, showing some love and care to his son, he may not say a single word. He may just hold the hand of the son. The son doesn't need words, the son knows the father. But just to give a sense of I am with you. you know. So in some of the touching moments of human life, it's not saying or doing or blah blah, blah nothing. Just that signal, I am with you, I understand. Like that, observation is free of articulation. The articulation which is of great value on lower levels is an interference and an obstacle on higher levels. On higher levels, every saint, every mystic talks about the greatness of silence, of being rather than becoming. All these words go together. Yeah. See, I feel that Ego is important uh -huh. as a part of our life sure. to go through the journey towards the higher. Yeah. And from our past Janma or Karma and Sanskar, we are not complete. We have some hikara. Well said. So I feel it's important and part of our life. Okay. Um, I would ask a question. Would you say it is important all the way till the end of the journey? No. Ah. Till the 99th step. That's right. Then we are together. <coughs> we are on the same page. Till the 99th step out of 100 steps in a model, the ego is necessary. 
if this man did not have ego, he would not travel all the way and come to USA to give lectures here. A certain sense of how oh, I want to give better lectures than how I gave last time. I, last time I did not communicate well. Last time I made, you know, I want to improve. That I, I want to improve his ego. And you are very right. But then, in the hundredth stage, in Bhakti Marga, they call it surrender. You know, I and I want to do is all uh, invalid at that time. In, in the language of devotion, it is surrender. In the language of this Atma Jnana, it is passive observation. The observer subsides, that is observing without an observer being there. Because to be an observer, to be an inquirer, to be a sadhaka is itself assuming an identity. And the pure satchit, existence awareness principle, has no specific identity. Because identity means boundary. Your true nature at the height of all this uh, spiritual wisdom is something which has no boundary at all. Unbounded. Satyam, jnanam, anantam, brahma, this is a statement. So we are together in saying 99 out of 100 steps, ego is required. Coarse ego, then a purified ego, then altruistic, then there is an ego which says, I don't care for popularity or this or that. I just want to refine my understanding, my expression, my relating. So there is, you know, whereas in coarse ego, how many people complimented me? How many people appreciated me? How many invitations I got? In business, in the so-called coarse spirituality, also one dreams, you know. I should be invited by, so in olden days, you know, scholars wanted to get invited by kings and so on. You know, Maharaja of Baroda invites some Shastri from somewhere, you know. So Shastri is very happy. You know, I am going to be Astana Vidwan of some guy quad in Baroda and so on. That is coarse ego. Though it is a, it's, you know, those people are good guys. <laughs> they go and do a good job. They give the best service. In modern times, suppose somebody like me, you know, dreams once in a while. Why don't I get, why don't I get an invitation in Harvard or somewhere to deliver a lecture? This is all coarse ego. And higher ego, the refined ego is, I don't need any invitation anywhere. I connect with God. I want my work to please Sri Krishna, not any institution or organization. That's easier to say. You know. In our privacy, if you were to ask us, you would say, you know, I want God to be pleased with me. But along with that, if Harvard invites me to deliver the commencement address for next, you know, outgoing batch, even Krishna will be happy, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sir. Yeah. You have said about mana, the mind. Correct, mana. In Gita, mana is referred also atma in some cases. Also. Depends on the context. Yeah, but so, man is not only a mind, it is referred to wherever it is referred to. Yes, mana can mean on different levels. But essentially, for example, uh, in chapter 6 of Gita, Arjuna's... So first of all, he has said in chapter 3, on the second slope, Oh, yeah, yeah. See, that mind is different. Mm -hmm. In six chapter, that mind is wrapped in Atma. Where is it called Atma? Uh, maybe you have Uddhareda Atman Atmanam. Yes. Correct. Right? Six so, chapter. Yeah, there Atma chapter, means Mana. In third chapter, he is taking mind as thoughts. Yeah. Forty Correct. seconds. Correct. Then in the twelfth chapter, again, he says the same thing. Mm -hmm. Then in thirteenth chapter, he Mahatma says fifteenth again. Mm -hmm. right? That is problem of language. I am fond of giving the example how the word New York can in some context mean the whole state. Some other context can mean the city of New York. So, contextual difference. Other day in India, somebody said, Rochester, my wife is, a, you know, she's in the medical field. She went to attend a medical conference in Rochester and Mayo Clinic. 
though I am I'm fairly familiar with U.S., for a moment I got confused. I said, oh yeah, that is upstate New York. Then that person corrected me, no, not that Rochester, Swamiji, I thought you knew all these things. We are talking of Minnesota. Then I said, oh yeah, yeah, correct, correct. My second question to you is... So, <laughs> language problem. Yeah. Second is, you have to collect... Gandhi. Gandhi and... They highlighted social service. Right. And it is a Krishna Murthy, hmm. right? Hmm. What is your opinion about uh, this Osho? Osho, I have high regard for Osho. Hmm. Um, uh, I don't regard him as enlightened like Ramana or Nisargadatta, hmm. but I regard him as, you know, simply unbelievable uh, source of uh, lot of insights. Beautiful. He has talked about all kinds of human issues on love, on anger, on pride, on jealousy and uh, Buddhist scripture, Hindu scripture, Jain scriptures, Christian scriptures, the wide range of uh, holy books and books of wisdom that he could explain in a very uh, nice manner, uh, very rare to find. So in scholarship and in creativity, and flowery expressions and humorous examples, Mullah Nasruddin stories put at the right place. Right. Oh my! Uh, see, I'm, I'm, my own master was Swami Chinmayananda. Uh, in terms of spectrum of uh, skills, Osho was ten times better than Chinmayananda. But my guru I regard so much higher because he was anchored very well in whatever he taught. But guru, your guru was condemning and uh, Chinmayananda Osho. That is, once I also heard him say, Swami Chinmayananji, I don't know whether on the platform or below, he said about Osho, Ah, vichar me thik the, achar me fas gay. He made a comment. Because but that is the impression that the people have, right? He slipped a little in personal conduct, it seems. No, it was uh, his uh, workers. Oh, right? possible, possible. He Therefore, I, I personally don't want to judge Osho. I have high regard. Uh, yeah, it could have been an unfortunate turn of events where the followers, you know, messed up everything. It is believed that they even poisoned him and so on. Yeah. That is most unfortunate. But I have great regard for Osho in terms of his intellectual abilities, his creativity, and he loved his uh, you know, congregation. He went far, for, went to great distance for making them illumined. Yeah. But probably ultimately, you know, you know, in life, we are all meant for certain gurus, and certain gurus are chemistry. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I have great regard for Satya Sai Baba, for example. But uh, I never felt drawn to him like a devotee or student. I have all the, you know, I even accept him as a realized and godly figure. Uh, but uh, I never felt drawn to him personally. It was Chinmaya and Ramana, you know, it's all our Pura Samskars, to whom we get drawn and with, about whom we feel a sense of a strong bond. Uh, this just happens. Any last question, you say? So, in our life, right, we normally, everything gets registered in our memory okay. right, as name, form, labeling, yes. right? Yes. So, how do we, how do we let the pure intelligence energy express through us? Exactly. Without, without that memory play out in the name, form, exactly. labeling. Correct. Right. What, what would you, yeah. how do we handle that practically? Correct. Right. You need an integrated approach. Well, what I mean by integration is there would be several things that need to be done and they should go in harmony. So things like you need to yourself see, I need to myself see my life, he need to see his life, where our energies are uh, getting dissipated. So maybe are we sleeping more than necessary or are we depriving ourselves of necessary rest? Both ways. Are we eating more than what is uh, optimum? Because sometimes, because of taste, you know, we take a little more. Or coming under some ideology, am I eating less? Whereby undernourishment might make me uh, <coughs> dull. Same way speech, in the lecture it came. If we are talking excessively, 
energy is gone. And if we don't talk where a word would have been very valuable, you know, one word, a stitch in time saves nine, goes the saying. So optimizing speech, sleep, food, etc., uh, we will be able to uh, increase our awareness level. Therefore, it pays for our, you and me, it pays to study this motivational literature also, Srivan Kovi, Robin Sharma and so on. They talk about various ways in which we optimize our day-to-day -day living. Are we not exercising at all? We don't have to imitate anybody. Somebody may be exercising two hours daily. For us, 20 minutes perhaps is enough, we don't know. So we need to examine where we are stuck, where we are not true to ourselves. If I believe uh, that uh, I should be speaking to my daughter who is going through some conflict, then if I do it, then it generates a certain you know, uh, state of mind where I feel release of energy. Whereas my heart says, you know, your daughter is going through some conflict and better at least one phone call leaving 